today we're in South Gloucestershire and we're going to a place called Deerham Park um, and this is a Baroque house that was built uh, towards the end of the 17th century and I've wanted to come here for quite a while um, and you might know it as the setting for a 1993 film called The Remains of the Day which is um, quite an atmospheric film um, it's a bit gloomy so um, the gloomy weather today probably uh, suits it a little bit and um, this is actually the village of Dirham that we're driving through now on the way to Dirham Park so uh, should be quite an interesting uh, day to have a little explore around As you can see, um, quite an old village. Here we are, we should be approaching the um, main entrance now. Here we are. The, uh, the main gate house and gates. That in front is probably the main drive down to the house. But uh, obviously the uh, the little sort of uh, car park provided is here, and uh, where you get your tickets or whatever. And look, we've even got sort of little electric vehicles to take you down to the entrance. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're on the main path down towards the house now. As you can see, it's a lovely tree lined uh, sort of avenue. Walking down the main drive, the uh, house comes into view I'm at the bottom of the hill. Just see it down there. If we walk down this bank a bit, we can uh, get a better view of this front of the house. Here we go. So you can see the house down there. I believe that is the east front of the house. I'm just on a path um, leading to a hill, sort of flanking the house, just so we can get a, another view. And there's this old sort of waterwork here. This area here, up on the hill, uh, next to the house, this is called the Old Lodge and um, it's a bit of a sort of seating area and cafe and stuff now. And a little sort of play area for kids and stuff. So there's a view of the house from the uh, top of the hill, next to the house. Okay, so I'm just heading down to the east front now. Just coming down that embankment that I was at the top of uh, a short while ago. Right, so this is the Grade 1 listed Durham Park. And this was the creation of William Blathwaite in uh, the 1690s and the early 1700s.
looking back quickly that's the embankment I've just come down and to the right here that's the uh, the normal path that you'd walk down towards the house. William Blathwaite um, was one of the wealthiest government administrators of his day and um, he was earning around £4,000 a year back then which is more like millions of pounds today and um, he put a lot of his money into Durham. Being a colonial administrator he was actually able to source a lot of goods from uh, North America through uh, acquaintances and colleagues. The East Front was designed by someone called William Talman um, and he was a pupil of Sir Christopher Wren who um, was responsible for St Paul's Cathedral. Um, and Talman had also done work on um, Chatsworth Perched on the top of the east front up there, you can probably see that there's um, a statue of an eagle and that um, represents the family crest of the Blathwaite. And flanking the front door here, you can see that there's a pair of uh, Doric columns. Across the top of the house there, you can see the classical balustrade and urns. And then the eagle in the middle again. Now when work was started on the house in the 1690s, um, the garden architect George London was actually working on the gardens at that time, uh, laying them out. And if we look back from the east front of the house, originally um, down here there would have been sort of parterres and fountains and canals. But as you can see, um, it's gone back to grass at the moment. But if you can see that um, hill in the distance, I'll zoom in a little bit. That hill in the distance on the top, there's a statue there. And there actually used to be a cascade that ran down there into a canal on the level at the bottom here with parterres and stuff and uh, I think that cascade had about 225 steps so it's quite large and um, if you want to see something that looks similar if you go to Ca uh, Chatsworth they've got a lovely cascade there and it would have been um, a similar idea if we have a quick uh, look down here you can see uh, the windows down there to let a bit of light in to where the um, servants and people would have operated. Down below. And um, I will be going in the house shortly, but um, let's just have a little look at this first, which is the greenhouse which actually strange for the time when it was built it's actually um, attached to the side of the house I think that was partly due to um, because how the uh, the land lay they didn't sort of have um, an area elsewhere to put this uh, greenhouse so it ended up there next to the house And the greenhouse um, was built in around 1701 and this was probably also designed by Talman. And if you look at the front of the greenhouse um, you'll see there's Tuscan columns and they were probably copied from the orangery at Versailles. And uh, quite handily when approaching um, from the east the greenhouse actually um, serves to hide the stable block which is um, behind so it makes it a bit more uh, pleasing on the eye and the main purpose of this greenhouse really was um, in the winter they could move the uh, 
trees such as uh, of orange trees and other plants and whatever needed warmth inside where that could get heat to them. And then in the summer the uh, plants would be moved back outside into the park and um, it would be somewhere to relax and stuff inside. And there's those Tuscan columns. And up there there's um, a stag. Right, so let's have a little look inside the orangery. Uh, interestingly, um, Humphrey Repton, the great garden designer, came here in about 1800. Um, and originally there was a slate roof on this greenhouse, but uh, Repton um, introduced this uh, glass ceiling. This is quite a large greenhouse and as you can see um, the doors down at the bottom here would lead uh, straight into the house. And as you can see they've actually got some trees here in the greenhouse so it's serving its purpose of um, keeping these warm in the winter. Well it's late autumn now so but as you can see fruit trees some limes, I believe. And a bit further on, we've got lemons, maybe. And on the uh, wall over there, we've got some old pictures of the house and the estate. Now if you look at this old picture on the wall here, looking out towards the middle and the top, you can see the east front stretching out, and you can see that hill I was on about. And if you look carefully, you can see the canal and the cascade leading up to the top of that hill. And like I said, that's um, grass now, outside the east front, but that's how it originally would have been laid out, which is quite interesting. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so moving on from the east front, I believe if we come around the side here, we'll see the stable block which was skillfully uh, hidden from the approach to the east front by the uh, greenhouse or orangery. Yeah, so that's the stable block there. And we've got a side view of the house here. So this is the stable block. Incidentally, uh, this stable block, this was also designed by William Talman. And there's a little courtyard here between the stable block and the side of the house. We've just left the um, stable block. 
if we turn around we can uh, have a little look over there to the left behind that tree there's a church and then the west front of the house you can see a bit of it in the corner and then coming back round this is the stable block from the other side Just down from the terrace here, you can see there's some uh, waterworks and ponds and stuff. Alright, I think we're going to try and pop in the house now. This is the west front of the house. This is interesting, just outside the entrance to the... Um, west front of the house. Looks like they're preparing for some planting or parterre or whatever. I've never seen that before actually. It's quite interesting. Apparently this is the Oak Passage, which um, for obvious reasons. This is where we came in just. There's the eagle again, so I'm guessing that's the family crest there on top of the fireplace. And another eagle up here above the door. Ooh, this looks like a fine room through here. Nice chandelier. I think this chandelier was sent away to be refurbished. This is the Great Hall. As you can see, a lot of paintings hung in here. Yeah, this is quite a nice room, quite a large fireplace, befitting a great hall. Well, that's unusual having a, uh, a clock sort of attached to the wall up there like that. You don't see that that much. quite dark in here but that's obviously uh, to protect um, the old furniture and fittings and stuff like that. Another nice fireplace, looks like marble. But and on top of the fireplace there's um, Delftware by the looks of it. And that was very popular at the time that um, this house was built. So it's probably going to be a running theme throughout the house. Um, 
Ah. This is the Diogenes room. Some uh, fabric wall hangings. Huh? And if we look down here, there's some more Delftware. I believe these are called pyramid vases or something. And what they were for, if you see the little um, spouts coming out of them, they were used to display um, sort of individual cut flowers and stuff like that. So you can imagine the individual flowers coming out of the little spouts on there. This is the damask bedchamber and again there's another one of those Delft pyramid vases that actually look more like pagodas but there we go. Looks like the main staircase for the house. I think the wood for uh, this staircase probably would have been sourced from North America, from the uh, contacts of Blathwaite. You can see there's a large painting or mural at the top there. Nice bit of work on the ceiling there. If we look through this door here, there's a painting by a famous artist called um, Van Hoogstraten, I think. And it actually looks like an enfilade of rooms <coughs> going through here. If you zoom in, it's actually a painting at the end. So there's just one room and a doorway, and then a painting at the end. But it actually looks like <coughs> it goes through about five rooms, but it's just a painting at the end there. <coughs> and that was by the Dutch artist Van Hoogs writing. Where are we now? This is the slopped parlour, apparently. As you can see, um, usually probably used for sitting and dining, etc. Pair of nice globes here. Yeah. It's not a euphemism. As I was saying, I think a couple of chandeliers um, were sent away to be restored in recent times. This is probably one of them.
can see this is the old staircase built of black walnut and we're gonna go up and have a look see what's upstairs And there's the uh, west front. This is the balcony room. More Delft ware. This is the tapestry bedchamber. More Delftware. And there we're going back down. Currently this is the nursery staircase leading to the nursery rooms. That's most of this part of the house uh, looked at. Right, so now we've left uh, the house. We're back to that little courtyard between the stables and the house that we saw a bit earlier. I think next we're going to see if we can have a look at the kitchens or the uh, downstairs area. Right, so let's see if we can get to the basement or kitchen. Here's the kitchen. Interesting contraption. Obviously to roast uh, something or other. This is interesting. This is the Bell's Passage. And as you can see up here, you got the bells that would have alerted the um, the butler and the servants and whatever to uh, whatever room needed service.
You can still see all the wires above that. That would have pulled the uh, the bells to ring. This is the great kitchen. This was apparently the original uh, 17th century kitchen. This is the dairy. With, uh, some nice tiling on the walls. Alright, so that was the um, kitchen and some of the servants' rooms. Now we're back out. So this is the west front of the house where we um, entered to have a little walk around just. and uh, This was completed in around 1692 apparently. If you look here, leading up onto the terrace, there's this Italianate uh, double staircase. Which uh, looks out onto the lawn and a garden in front of it. And just to the right there, there's a church. I think we're going to try and have a little look at the church now and then some more of the gardens. Just while we're on the way up to the church, um, it's a nice view of um, the planting and stuff down here. leads up to the church this is the Anglican Church of St Peter and this was originally built in the mid 13th century however when the house was built um, this was extensively restored
or to memorial him. Some of the tiles in here are apparently from uh, the 13th century. A lot of these uh, gravestones and stuff have uh, seen better days. There's some nice headstones and stuff, but you can't really read uh, pretty much all of them anymore. You can just make out a bit of this one. Walking along this terrace, and here apparently we've got something called the Lost Terraces, whatever they are. The Lost Terraces. Nice sculpted uh, bench here on the lost terraces an icon on there and it looks like this was uh, made in 2015 and I think um, I think these lost terraces had sort of been uh, reclaimed by nature and in recent years they've uh, cleared it all out so um, the original paths are um, available to walk again. I think that's pretty much all these are, these lost terraces. Oh look, they've made uh, signposts out of the old tree stumps. That's quite good. Alright, so that's enough for the uh, lost terraces. We'll go and see what else we can find now. Okay, so now we're down to what I think is known as the West Garden. If we turn around. You can see that this leads straight up to the uh, west front of the house, right at the end. So if we do this really bad bit of editing here, if you follow my finger, we're probably about here, on the west front. And you'll see that this garden arrangement here is actually still in play. The original Dutch garden that was um, this picture's from 1712, and if you move up, you can see uh, the west front of the house and everything, and this planting at the side. See so the planting's either side, and there's the west front of the house. So this this part is actually um, quite similar to how it was originally laid out. So. we're here and then the house is there like I was saying earlier there used to be a canal and then a cascade going up the hill where we came from originally and I'll go up to that top of that hill 
on the way out and we'll see the uh, statue at the top. Right, so we're still on the um, in the gardens on the west side of the house. And uh, we're going to see what's down here now. Alright, so down this bit we've got an original 17th century cascade. And then into a pool. I'm pretty sure um, the gardens and parkland are grade 2 star listed as well, by the way, as you'd expect. And then down beyond the uh, cascade and little pool that's to our left, um, you've got this bigger pool at the bottom. And at the bottom there's a wall with some niches in and uh, benches and stuff. These niches probably would have had statues or something in them originally. If we turn round, you'll see that it's raining, but you can also see the pool with the uh, cascade beyond it that we just saw. And you can see a bit of the house and the church. That's quite nice. Zoom a little bit. Here we are, back near the stables now. And we're going to go um, back to the other side of the house. Alright, so we're back at the east front of the house now. And uh, we're going to imagine now how it was originally. So, straight in front of us, along the grass, there would have been um, parterres of flowers and stuff, straight in front of us. And then up the hill in the middle, that would have been where there was a massive cascade of water coming down. And then at the bottom that would have been probably met by a little pool. And then down the right hand side of the view, there would have been a big canal down there. And that would have gone straight down. And it probably would have come down here towards the uh, greenhouse that we saw earlier. So obviously... Uh, the lie of the land has changed slightly because on the left hand side in the old picture there were sort of formal terraces going across the left here but you've got sort of a weird shaped hill now so that land uh, must have changed slightly and uh, in a minute I'm going to go up to the top of the hill to see the uh, statue of I think it's Neptune on the top so while I'm walking up the drive on the way to the uh, statue at the top of the hill um, I should mention something quite sad um, There were previously a lot of deer in this parkland and um, I think it was quite famous for it but um, sadly they detected high levels of bovine TB in the deer and um, in March 2021 they actually had to call the entire herd which is pretty sad so previously there would have been a lot of deer around in the parkland but alas not anymore you'll be aware that um, during the second world war a lot of these stately homes um, were used for various purposes and this was actually used to house uh, child evacuees
Okay, so we're at the bottom of that hill now, where the cascade used to run down. And it would have run down, and then probably met a little pool down here somewhere. And then a canal would have run down there. Here we are, made it to the top of the hill. And here's the statue of Neptune, the god of water. So as I was saying, this statue would have been at the top of the hill. And then you see the house down there. And then there would have been a cascade of water gushing all the way down the hill. Into pools and a canal. Leading down to by the greenhouse. You can imagine how good that would have looked. And if you want to see that in action, um, I'd recommend going to Chatsworth because they've still got a similar cascade there and it's pretty amazing. Here's the statue again. And I bet you yeah, this used to have water spurting out of it. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, there's been quite a bit of filming for uh, TV and films here over the years, including the likes of Poldark and Sanditon and um, a film I really like called Remains of the Day. And they also did a Doctor Who as well, I think. But yeah, if you're into your uh, country house films, that 1993 film, The Remains of the Day, that's a great film and it's very very atmospheric and uh, a bit gloomy and it's about um, a butler and um, sort of a female servant in the mid 1900s and um, it's a really good watch so I'd really recommend that one if you haven't seen it and uh, just before I go I'm just having a quick look at these uh, gatehouses that you come to on the way in Here's the main gates. Well, I uh, hope you found some of that interesting. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching. Really, really appreciate it every time. And uh, yeah, I'd recommend a day out here. Very, very interesting. So, uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot.